Guys, life cycle and pathogenesis are same. Okay, so if they ask life cycle, you write pathogenesis. Same thing in human, whatever happens, mosquito, everything you complete it. We have seen the details of this one in the last video. Let us look at the textual details. Okay, some details from the textbook. See, so human cycle is called as schizogony. Schizogony. Schizogony is in the humans. In the mosquito, it is a sporogony. Okay. So, both of these you will have to write in the exam and explain. If you just draw the diagram, no marks. So, let us look at this. In human cycle, schizogony, you have to explain what happens in the liver and the RBC. Then put one more heading. <clears throat> gametogony. Okay. Are you able to see what is written? Liver, RBC, gametogony. Three things we have to write. Let us look at. Um, details of what happens in the liver. We already know, but we're just seeing some individual points, okay? Okay, liver. The pre, it is called as pre-erythrocytic schizogony. Guys, it's pre-erythrocytic. Why? Because it's before the RBC. So here what happens one hepatocyte can contain 2,000 to 50,000 uninucleate merocytes. That's all actually we wanted to tell you. Everything else has been told. Some extra information here. Numericals. One hepatocyte can contain 2,000 to 50,000 uninucleate merocytes. See, basically if they ask you life cycle, write everything that you know. Okay. Human is intermediate host. Mosquito is definite host. And because of the bite of a female anophilus mosquito, sporozoids may be injected into the blood capillary. Okay. Some sporozoids may be destroyed by phagocytes and some reach the liver. Okay. Some are destroyed. Some means what? Sporozoids. Some sporozoids are destroyed. Some are phagocytosed, you can say, and some reach the liver. Now, in liver, what happens? Pre-erythrocytic schizogony. Okay. In this, um, what and all you will expect, this is also called as tissue stage or ex-erythrocytic stage. Guys, okay, so what and all are the stages? We will come back to this later. Liver one is called as pre-erythrocytic schizogony or exo-erythrocytic schizogony or it can also be called as tissue schizogony. They are also calling it as merogony. Okay, four, four names. Now, as soon as it enters the liver, see it enters the liver within one hour. Some extra information enters liver within one hour of being injected. Here what happens? The elongated spindle shaped sporozoite becomes round. See this diagram. So much of detail is there here. They are elongated and once they become going to the liver cell, they become round it seems. So much of tactics. Na? Then they... Uh, undergo repeated nuclear division. They form lot of daughter nuclei. Each of them will get cytoplasm. So what will happen? There will be so many merozoites. So this is called as uh, pre-erythrocytic uh, schizont or meront. It can also be called as a meront. A schizont can also be called as a meront, guys, if it contains merozoites. So it is called as a schizont or meront, it seems. Wow. Nothing much to worry here. They will rupture in 60, 6 to 15 days and release merozoids. Now these merozoids go to the RBC. So human cycle continued. Now we are going to the erythrocytic schizogony. Keywords that you need here are invagination. So they infect the erythrocyte by a process called as invagination. What is this invagination? There is a receptor on the RBC called as glycophorin with the help of which the merozoites are going to enter the RBC. 
still this imagination only they are explaining these merozoites they have some apical complex they attach to the erythrocytes by their apex okay and the merozoites lie within the intra erythro erythrocytic paracytophorous vacuole formed by the red cell membrane by a process of invagination so there is a vacuole i think this is also important now what happens to the merozoite it will lose its internal organs it appears rounded it will have a vacuole in the center cytoplasm push to the periphery and nucleus at one pole so it look like a ring that's all guys don't worry much so these are called as ring forms or young trophozoites look at the diagram here this one here you can see the ring form it's not very clear but actually <clears throat> let's see if there's a clearer diagram wait this is clear see this inside the rbc this merozoite in the center it has made a vacuole in the periphery it has made the cytoplasm and the nucleus is pushed to one pole so it looks like a ring okay that's all it's pretty clear right very good so this rbc story is still not ending these merozoites what they do they feed on the hemoglobin but they don't metabolize the hemoglobin completely so they leave behind something like a malaria pigment or a hemozoin pigment okay so this is important in liver they did not leave any pigment that's what you should know this malaria pigment which is released is taken up by the reticulo endothelial cells and such pigment laden cells in the internal organs provide histological evidence of the previous malarial infection so this can actually go in bracket we are talking about the life cycle so this is more about use of this pigment okay now what happened moving on now what happens to this the ring form develops enlarges in size it shows a motility okay and then it reaches a stage where it, the nucleus starts dividing cytoplasm starts dividing and obviously it will form again a meront right so this meront which is the rbc in this case has only h to 32 merozoites and it will also contain this hemozoin that is the pigment okay pigment because it fed on the hemoglobin now this one will rupture correct it releases the merozoites merozoites re enter rbcs and cycle continues okay so there is para cytemia para cytemia so till the host's immune response this will happen now what happens we have to move on to gametogony in gametogony what happens the merozoites some of them they become gametocytes correct they become gametocytes some merozoites become gametocytes gametocytes i think we can continue in the next video there are a lot of other things okay some terminologies are also there like pre patent period incubation period lot of terminologies guys let's come back and look at all these okay so much to learn in malaria right i know it just became a little too much maybe for you okay let's just revise what we have seen so far okay we wanted to look at the human cycle schizogony it is called then we will see the mosquito cycle which is called as sporogony okay in the human cycle what and all we saw that is schizogony we saw two types of schizogony the pre erythrocytic schizogony and then we saw the erythrocytic schizogony after that we will see the gametogony correct i think you are overloaded already so please come back for the next video take some rest and come back okay smile bye bye